Sure. Go for it. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Max Olupoku. I am from Lewisburg State Research University. This is, a day, this is a day in the life series for the Society of Interventional Radiology Educational YouTube series. And today I have here a very prominent figure. He goes by the name Dr. Daniel Zay. He's a professor at Stanford University Medical Center. It's an honor to have you here, Dr. Zay. Thank you, Maxwell. All right. So would you please start by giving us a little history about your background? Sure. Uh, so I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where my parents worked at the university there. And I went to public school for high school. Then I went to Harvard for college, Stanford for an MD, PhD, California Pacific for internship, UCSF for residency, and then back to Stanford for fellowship. And the night of the last day of my fellowship at the stroke of midnight, I turned into an attending at Stanford where I've been for the past 25 years. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, so would you like to tell us about why you chose radiology? Yeah, so radiology was not originally one of my, my interests. Uh, you know, from, from my childhood, I was always interested in surgery and had always assumed that I would go into some sort of a surgical field. Uh, I wasn't sure whether it was going to be cardiac or neuro or ortho or reconstructive or something. And I rotated through all those uh, clinical rotations in medical school and really loved them. But my PhD is in biophysics, and I did research on magnetic resonance spectroscopy. And as you know, spectroscopy has nothing to do with imaging. But people saw those words magnetic resonance and said, oh, you'd be a natural fit for radiology. So I also rotated through radiology. And I thought, you know, this ain't bad. Uh, I kind of like it. Although I did miss the patient contact, uh, even though it was very intellectually satisfying to look at images and come up with diagnoses. And so later in my medical school years, uh, I did a month-long elective doing two weeks of neurointerventional and two weeks of body interventional radiology and immediately clicked. And I thought, okay, I have now found my calling. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Wow. That's really amazing to hear that. And um, after your interventional radiology training, would you like to tell us why you decided to go into academic practice? and some of the benefits in a, of academic practice. Yeah, so I went into academics in part just from habit and inertia. So I was a student of some sort from age four to age 36. Uh, I never took a gap year or any time off. So I was either a student or a trainee for 32 years in a row. And so I felt very comfortable in the confines of academia. Uh, both of my parents were also uh, academics. And so you know, I come from a long line of uh, people who are professors or teachers. And so it just seems sort of natural. But in addition, what I wanted to do for a living and what I wanted to contribute to the field and to the world in general uh, would require that I not only practice medicine, but I try to figure out how to do better. And in order to do that, of course, the, the most established route is to do research. And there, I do have some friends in private practice that do great research, but overall, it's a lot easier to do research when you're in academia, because not only is it expected of you, but there are resources available, there's time set aside, uh, there are collaborators that are uh, just in the in the environment that you can't even ignore them or, or avoid them for that matter. So, uh, so staying in academia really seemed to be the, the natural fit for me. And the disadvantages, um, as everyone knows, academia doesn't pay as much as private practice. Uh, also, in order to fulfill 
the mission of doing research and teaching as well as providing clinical care, you can imagine that the hours can be very long uh, and probably even longer than those in uh, private practice uh, because there are certain open-ended tasks that are never quite finished. So, uh, so that's one of the disadvantages. Uh, but the advantages, of course, um, I get to do really interesting advanced cases that require a lot of creativity and uh, improvisation. And I get to work with similarly minded, very well-trained, curious and innovative people in the field of interventional radiology as well as in the uh, collaborating fields. Uh, I get propelled by the enthusiasm of students and trainees who arrive with so much energy and ideas that uh, that that just puts gas in the tank. So these are some of the the huge advantages of being in academia. Wow, sounds great to hear. So what's a typical day for you, like Dr. Zay? Um, well, in addition to being a professor at Stanford University, uh, as of two years ago, I became the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Vascular and Interventional Radiology, Radiology, GVIR, which is the official journal of the Society of Interventional Radiology and is the highest ranked subspecialty or specialty journal in interventional radiology. And that takes up a lot of time and effort. So I was able to cut back my hours uh, doing clinical work and teaching and research. Uh, so currently I spend about 45 hours a week on JVIR and another 45 hours a week treating patients, teaching, and, and actually right now I'm not really doing any research. So a typical day, um, it, the, I, I go into the office about three days a week. Those typical days, I'll, I'll go into the office at about 7 to 7.15 a.m. Uh, I go through rounds to discuss the day's cases. Uh, I do the cases. Um, another disadvantage of academia, though, is that room turnaround tends to be kind of slow in academia because <laughs> the, the incentives are different compared with private practice. And so in between cases, I review papers, I answer emails, uh, I get about 150 to 200 emails a day. Um, and I try to read up on published articles, particularly ones that are, are not in JVIR, but may have some sort of influence on the field of IR. Um, and when I'm done with cases at the end of the day, uh, and the end of the day might be 4 p.m., or it might be 2 a.m., uh, so it's hard to tell. Um, if I can stay awake, then I work more on the journal. And if I finish early, I go home and have dinner with my family. But oftentimes I don't. Okay. So uh, so those, those are my clinical days. On my non-clinical days, I pretty much work from about 8 a.m. to about 1 a.m., uh, reading papers, reviewing papers, coming up with strategy for the journal. Um, I tend to eat breakfast and lunch at my desk, and I tend to eat dinner with my family. Wow. That shows, it tells everybody that you work so hard every day. So I, yeah, like, uh -huh. I didn't plan on working this hard when I entered radiology, <laughs> but uh, interventional radiology is a little different from diagnostic radiology. Okay. So... You, you train as a diagnostic radiologist before going into interventional radiology. Um, for people who don't know, uh, can you please tell us why is it why it is important uh, to train, or why what is the essence of diagnostic radiology and its importance in interventional radiology? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I'm old enough that in order to enter IR, I had to first get trained in DR. And of course, now we have the uh, we have several different pathways to enter IR, including the, the uh, integrated program. 
But uh, in my day, you had to do a, a year of internship and four years of DR residency uh, before entering a fellowship in IR. And I would not say that those four years of radiology were wasted because I think there are some people that discuss that. Like, uh, you know, I did however many months of nuclear medicine and however many months of mammography. And it, it just uh, didn't really contribute to the uh, skills and the tasks that, that are involved with the field of IR. Uh, I would disagree with that because I think the better the diagnostic radiologist you are, the better the interventional radiologist you are. And as is true of DR, in IR, you only see what you look for. Right. So if you're doing an angiogram, if you're doing CT guided something or ultrasound guided something, if there are findings that are, you know, uh, imprinted on your retina that you don't understand, then, then you can't act upon them. You can't use those to serve your patient. So the better the diagnostic radiologist you are, the better you can interpret those images, the better you can extract useful information from those images that can help you be a doctor to your patient. Mm. Wow, that was very strong. <laughs> okay, so uh, can you also tell us um, who is fit or who would you recommend going into academic practice when it comes to interventional radiology? Well, the, the old ideal of an academic was something called the triple threat. And the three threats, one was uh, the threat of being a masterful clinician. Another threat was being a brilliant scientist and researcher. And the third threat was being an inspirational teacher. And there are those that say that the days of triple threat are over because it's a full-time job to be a clinician. It's a full-time job to be a researcher and it can be a full-time job to be an educator as well. And no one has that many hours in the day, uh, that many neurons in, in their brain to be able to be the best at all three. Uh, and, and I think most people will still try to be as good as they can be in all three but probably excel at one or sometimes two of the three. Um, I guess you could ask my, my trainees and my students whether, <laughs> whether education is one of my three. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for that. And um, lastly, uh, what advice will you give to medical students or uh, college students who would like to go into interventional radiology? Well, not very many people leave the field of interventional radiology, uh, but plenty of people leave other fields when they learn about interventional radiology and they switch fields and go into IR because it is really an attractive field. Uh, and it's, it's now a big enough field that it does allow for people of different backgrounds and different strengths to contribute to the field. So we do have uh, people who are great at education. We do have people that are great at research. We do have people that are great at taking care of patients. Um, and, and so there isn't a cookie cutter description of the right kind of person to enter IR. Uh, and I think that's part of the excitement about the changes in the new pathways into becoming IR that I think we are drawing upon um, medical students who uh, may have different uh, aspirations than people who are already, who have already chosen uh, to enter diagnostic radiology residency. So um, I think in addition to medical students who are interested in DR, we are also now attracting medical students who are interested in procedural specialties like surgery. Uh, and I think that mixture is going to help propel the, the, the field even faster than, than it has uh, been progressing so far. Um, how to decide? 
Um, when I was in college, I was actually a double major in biochemistry and studio art. And I was not sure whether I was gonna become a doctor or become an architect or a designer. And at one time I had dinner with one of my art professors who was this really terrific teacher, uh, really interesting artist, had a very interesting background. Um, and so I asked him, how did you decide to become an artist? And he sort of laughed and he said, no one decides to become an artist. The, the life is too hard, the, the pay is too bad, the, uh, the stability is just not there. No one, no one chooses to be an artist, but each artist has a little demon that follows her or him around and pokes her or him in the rear end with a sharp needle, constantly saying, you must do art. You must be an artist. And I think some of us are that lucky that we have a demon that tells us to become physicians. Exactly. Or to become interventional radiologists. And we find meaning in our jobs or in our careers. And uh, and it's actually a calling. So from that point of view, I don't know whether it's always the, the, uh, the situation where a student or a trainee chooses IR, or sometimes it's vice versa. Sometimes just the mm -hmm. field, the characteristics of the field call out to a person. Wow, thank you very much. I think that this video will be very useful to uh, medical students and other uh, college students who are interested in going into IR. Thank you for your time, Dr. Zay, and uh, it's an honor. It was an honor having you on this platform. Well, th thank you for having me, Maxwell, and I, ho I hope to meet you in person someday. Yeah.